Hey friends, it is Memorial Day weekend and you can see that the yard is exploding. Be is enjoying the shade in the grass. My right, bug, what do you smell? You feel the breeze? I was out here this morning at like 9 a.m. because it's either 50 degrees, pouring, or it's 90 and humid. That's what we've had for our spring. So it's either been really cold, pouring rain, or 90 degrees. There has been no in between. So this morning it was 80% humidity and it was like 75. It was hot. I only lasted out here an hour. I did not get any of the garden planted. I kind of didn't think I was going to. My goal was to just tackle one area at a time. What I did notice is that the squirrels are already eating my strawberries before they turn red, or as they turn red, which kind of sucks. I did get the okra that I purchased locally in the ground. I was, was a happy surprise that I was able to find that locally at a large family-owned nursery on the south shore of the island, Bayport Flower House. I had never been there before, and I liked it. It was nice. So you can see my cold weather crops are kind of struggling because, again, they like it when it's 50. They don't like it when it's 90. And the parsley was beginning to bolt, so I did trim it back. You could see this is my rosemary is kind of hidden in here. We've got a borage. That does not look good. A calendula, a borage, and a calendula. Another calendula back there. Chamomile. So last week I came out here and this was swarming with termites. And the birds were, were eating them for me, but it was like swarming with crazy termites. So I went inside to get diatomaceous earth to pour on the termites. And in the five minutes it took me to go inside, we had a baby bunny in her mouth that she had killed. And this is like a ritual of spring, that it's not spring until she kills a bunny. And it's sad, but it's what she does. I've tried to train her out of it, to no luck. And so the rest of them are still, the nest is in there, which I was not crazy about. My husband left it, which I wasn't happy about, because it's not in a great area. It's in the garden where we need to plant things. And he was like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll barricade it. She won't get in there. Well, any of you who have husbands know that they don't always do what they say they're going to do in a timely fashion. So B got to the bunny. There's four remaining. The other four are hanging out in these areas. So this is what I did today. You could see the piles. So I love mugwort. It's very useful to me. But it has taken over. And it is now choking out my peonies, my hydrangeas the Baptista, the willow tree, along with the wisterias choking things out. So I was like, oh, I'll bang this out really fast. It'll be fine. So I got a little over an hour and I did make a big, I did make a big, you know, noticeable difference, but you could see back there, there are still lots of cleavers. There's still lots of mugwort. That whole area is like, Mock for it. But I got this manageable. The thing is, is now this needs to all be covered with mulch because otherwise it's all going to grow back. And again, my back is out. I cannot do mulch. I don't really like doing mulch. I would just hire someone to do mulch. But I have a husband that says he'll do it. And again, that does not always happen. Rarely actually does it happen in my house. So... I'm gonna have to figure something out, some like sort of living mulch if I just put all those weeds back on there to create living mulch so that it's covered. I probably will do that just to get the soil covered up. I did harvest the spinach out of the green stalks because it was bolting and I really got little to no spinach. You could see these happy clover blossoms. So I'm gonna harvest some of them. The lemon bob. 
peas are finally growing, but you know, they don't really like this hot weather either. And I don't even have any flowers yet. So time will tell. Cilantro doesn't like hot weather either. But I did get my dwarf, two dwarf tomatoes planted, a string bean, a string bean, the other dwarf tomato, and another string bean planted. The other string beans did not germinate. I reseeded again today. I'm having issues with squash. We had overwintered some tropicals downstairs. I asked for them to be moved away from where the seedlings were. They were not. And some of my squash and cucumbers got killed by aphids. So the aphids will like suck the energy out of the plant. And that's exactly what happened. That is the second white zucchini that's gone down. I'm really sad because I wanted to try that variety this year because it seems prolific and it's hoping the squash bugs weren't going to annihilate it. Here's more of our plants for the medicinal stand. The other berries are looking great. They like the heat. The rest of the plants, not so much. This one's not looking so hot. We'll pull him out. But the rest of them look good. So... We, uh, we've got still time. There are three spots left. I will be sending this video out to my email list. So we've got strawberries, fennel, American elderberry, oregano, tarragon. What else I have going on? I think I've got fever for you. Got calendula. This is not for the plant sale. It's just there for now. We've got lemon balm, evening primrose, comfrey. And I moved stuff over here because I ran out of space. We have lobelia, black cumin seed, St. John's wort, agastache, chamomile, clary sage, lobelia, vervain, violets, toothache plant, bigger American elderberries. Those are two-year plants. Then over there we have Penny Royal. What else? Penny Royal, Fever Few, Nettles, more Calendula, Mullen, more Clary Sage, and Borage. So if you want to start growing in a small garden, which is very easy to do, it is not any harder than growing perennials because most medicinal plants are perennials. You should come on down to Port Jeff, Celtic Apothecary, Celtic Apothecary, while oh, the sage is blooming, and get a garden guide, a calendula plant, listen to me speak for about 15 minutes, and then take your pick of the medicinal plants that are there to take home with you. And you can have a little area like this, or like I have in the raised bed, or in the green stalks, or in a garden bed, filled with medicinal plants that you can be prepared for whatever happens and be knowing that you're supporting your body not working against it you're working with it so we've got our spearmint in here we've got some tropical mint some regular mint some pineapple sage our milkweed or wendy's wish it's starting it's starting so, until next time, friends, I hope you enjoy the Memorial Day weekend, the calm before the storm.